It'll be the afternoon here in a minute. Hallelujah. But I got 10 minutes to say this morning. Hallelujah. But we appreciate New Destiny Church being here with us, Pastor Logan, and uh, coming all the way from Jacksonville to be with us. Please, please stay after and eat before you leave and go back, and uh, and we'll fellowship and have a good time. Uh, but this morning, um, and we appreciate all the visitors that are here. Let's give the visitors another hand. Amen. Thanks, sir. I got two. All right. Thanks, sir. Hallelujah. It's going to be a two-water day, I guess. Hallelujah. But uh, if you have your Bibles and you want to look or you just want to look on the screen, the Holy Spirit led me into Luke chapter 24 this week. Um, I know that was our text uh, Wednesday before last. We were in Luke chapter 24. And the Holy Spirit led me back there this week. And there's um, three verses, actually, that I want to focus in on out of that chapter, verses 25 through uh, 27. Verses 25 through 27. Hallelujah. Good to see Sarah's mom and dad with us. Haven't seen them in a while, and good to have them in church with us, and everyone that's here. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <clears throat> if you're ready, say, I'm ready. All right, hallelujah. Here in Luke chapter 24 and verse 25 through 27, it, it says this. Then he said unto them, and this is Jesus talking, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scripture the things concerning himself. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you from the subject, catch up. Not, as you can see on the screen, we're not talking about Heinz. Catch up. But catch up. Look at your neighbor and say, you might need to catch up. I don't know. We'll find out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll find out. Hallelujah. But let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're asking, Lord God, for the anointing, just in an extra special measure to come on this vessel of clay this morning. Think through our minds. Speak through our lips, God. Say what needs to be said. Do what needs to be done, Father, in this house. God, if there's anything we haven't heard already in our prayer and study and meditation, let it come forth in a prophetic utterance. And we bind every demon of hell that's against this word. You will not hinder the seed of this word to from going into the heart of God's people and taking a root and God we give you the praise the glory and the honor in the mighty name of Jesus amen amen hallelujah 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 amen um this chapter in Luke chapter 24 reveals to us one of Jesus's post-resurrection appearances to his disciples. How many understands that before Jesus ascended, after he resurrected from the dead, he appeared to his disciples on multiple occasions. This is one of them. And in this chapter, we find two of his disciples were on a road traveling to the village of Emmaus. And we understand from reading this chapter that these disciples were sad. They were confused as many of the disciples were after uh, the death of Jesus. They were sad because the one that they thought was going to redeem Israel from Roman oppression had died. And they were confused because it had been three days since his death and they were told that his body was not found. They were also told that angels had showed up at his tomb and said that he was alive, but no one has seen him. Hallelujah. And so they're confused. They're saddened and confused. And, and so while, while being sad and confused and traveling to this village of Emmaus and they're, they're, they're discussing all of these things, while they're having the discussion of all of these things that have recently taken place, Jesus shows up on the road walking with them. Out of nowhere he seems to come, but they don't recognize him. He's in a glorified body now. 
Uh, Jesus is in a body much like we will have when the church is raptured. How many still believes in a rapture? Hallelujah. And so the disciples had a hard time recognizing Jesus in his glorified body. And this is a whole other message that I don't have time to preach, but uh, they had a hard time recognizing Jesus in his glorified body because they were so accustomed to the physical, fleshly Jesus. And uh, not to mention they saw that physical Jesus die, a brutal death, a horrific death. And so because they were so accustomed to the physical side of Jesus, it was hard for them to recognize the glorified spiritual Jesus that was walking around among them. And this speaks to the fact, children of God, that sometimes we as Christians can get so focused on the flesh and so accustomed to the flesh that it becomes hard for us to recognize things of the spirit. Hallelujah. But when Jesus appears to them, I want you to notice that, and you can go back and read this chapter if you want to, but when Jesus appears to them, he doesn't say, hey, it's me, it's Jesus. He doesn't come up to them and say, hey, I'm alive. I was right, I told you. That's not what he said. He shows up to them on the road to Emmaus and he asks them, why are you sad? As if he doesn't know anything that's gone on. And then they look at him and they almost just, I I could just see them laughing at him. I could just see them looking at him with just wonder and amazement because they, they, they said to him, how do you not know about Jesus? The great prophet, the one who was supposed to redeem Israel. How do you not know he was arrested and he was killed? This was the biggest thing going on in the town. How do you not know? Are you hearing me? And so they proceeded to tell Jesus about his body not being found in the tomb. And they proceeded to tell Jesus about the claim that he was alive. Hallelujah. But once again... Jesus doesn't respond to them with, hey, it's me, I'm, I'm alive. No, look at what he responds with in verse 25 in our text that we read. Then he said unto them, O fools. <laughs> Y'all wouldn't like to have Jesus for a pastor, hallelujah. <laughs> How would you like me to call you fool, come here. <laughs> hallelujah. Pastor, I need some help, you fool. Pastor, pray for me, you fool. You wouldn't like Jesus. He said to them, oh, fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. I want to I want to point out this verse to you because this is really uh, the verse I'm pulling my 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 message from today. Sometimes you can be a fool that is slow of heart. Slow of heart simply means that it takes you a while to understand and grasp things. Some of you may have been called slow in school. Hallelujah. We don't have to raise our hands on that. Hallelujah. But there may be some things in your life that you are slow in. You're slow to grasping a hold of it. Others may be quick to understand it. You might be slow to get it. Others may be quick to get math and you might be slow to get math. Others may be quick to learn how to cook. You know, it makes sense to them. Others are slow to get it. But you can be slow in life, but you can also be slow with the scriptures. Hallelujah. These men were slow with scripture. Now, here's. The problem with being slow of heart when it comes to scripture. Here's the problem with being someone that doesn't grasp scripture quickly. Watch me, please. Here's the problem with it. The problem is that things can happen in your life that there's an answer for in scripture. But you can remain lost, confused, and upset because you're too slow to see the answer. In scripture, these men were sad, they were confused, they were troubled, but yet there was an answer in the word of God. Come on, hallelujah. 
There was an answer the whole time that would have calmed their troubles, but they were too slow to understand it. Ooh, hallelujah. Sometimes when we're waiting on God to give us an answer, he's actually waiting on us to see the answer that he's already given. Hallelujah. They were confused. They were disheartened. They were troubled. Uh, not because they didn't have an answer for the situation that they were going through, but they were saddened and confused and troubled because they were too slow to see the answer that was already in the word of God. Some of us this morning or this afternoon, or what time is it? This afternoon, some of us this afternoon would see depression break. We would see the trouble lift. We would see the sadness flee. We would see the joy come if we wasn't so slow. To receive revelation from the scripture. Now when I call you slow in scripture, I'm not calling you dumb. Slow in scripture has nothing to do with being intelligent. Because understanding from scripture doesn't come through intellect, it comes through revelation. So you can have a PhD and have letters behind your name and be slow to understand scripture. But you can have a sixth grade education and be slow in school, but quick to understand the word of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Slow does not mean dumb when it comes to scripture. Hallelujah. Because intellect is not what makes you slow in scripture. Now. There are things that will make you slow in scripture that has nothing to do with intellect. And there's two specific things here that I uh, seen in this chapter that the Lord spoke to me and showed me about that I believe slowed them down to seeing the scripture. And number one was this, the preconceived idea of what Jesus had come to accomplish. Their preconceived idea, what they'd already made up in their mind that Jesus had come to do, slowed them down from seeing the answer that they needed to see in Scripture. Understand something. Jesus' mission was not carnal, but spiritual. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Can y'all walk with me for a while? Yeah. We'll preach here in a minute, but walk with me. Jesus' mission was not carnal, but spiritual. What are you saying, Pastor? He did not come to free Israel from, from oppression and redeem them back to a place of authority uh, and, and prosperity by building up a physical army that would run Rome out of Israel. He did come to redeem them. He did come to put them back in a place of authority and prosperity, but not physically. Amen. Jesus came to build a church. Come on, somebody. He said, I will build my church upon the revelation of who I am and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus didn't come to loose Rome's chains, but sin's chains. Because if you get loose from sin's chains, Rome nor any other country nor any other empire can bind you. Just ask Paul and Silas. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But <clears throat> these men, like much of the disciples, had already made up in their minds that Jesus was there to physically overthrow Rome. So his death, though it was scriptural, and there was an answer in the scripture for what happened to Jesus, it didn't line up with their preconceived idea of God's plan. I'm going to talk to somebody. Can I help somebody? Sometimes we're slow of heart to believe the word because we don't want to abandon our ideas and understanding of what God is doing. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have already made up in our mind what God is doing when really that's not what he's doing at all. And we want to hold on to these ideas even though the word of God and God's spirit is trying to reveal to us something else. 
and we're slow of heart. Sometimes you're slow in heart because you're busy trying to marry your ideas and desires with what God actually said. Here are these men and they're thinking in their minds, how does Jesus dying fit in with reestablishing Israel in the earth? (laughs) See, sometimes... Sometimes the puzzle piece is the right color. It's got a tree limb on it, and you need a tree limb. You need a piece of the sky, and you need some of the tree, and that piece looks exactly like what you need, but it just don't fit. Is anybody with me? God Almighty. Sometimes your ideas, your plans, though it sounds good, does not fit with what God is doing. Many people are sad and confused today because what they thought would happen is not what God is doing. Do I need to say that again? Many people are sad and upset and confused today because what they thought would happen is not what God is doing. You're having a hard time seeing what God is doing because you won't let go of what you thought he was doing. Let me help some slow people today. Can I help some slow people today? Are you ready? All right. I'm going to help some slow people today. Are you ready? Here's your word. It's okay to be wrong. Oh, I just set somebody free. If you got that, I just set somebody free. Let me say it one more time. It's okay to be wrong. Matter of fact, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's okay to be wrong. Some of you this morning need to repent of your pride. Oh, hallelujah. I got some good amens on that. Hallelujah. This must be a sanctified house. Hallelujah. Some folks in this house may need to repent of your pride and quit holding on to what you thought would happen and get a hold of what is happening. What are you saying, Pastor? I want to give a word to somebody. God's doing something right now that's going to blow your mind, but you're going to be too slow to see it because you won't let go of what you thought he was doing. But I don't care what you thought he was doing. I don't want what I thought he was. I want what he is. I need what he is doing. I said I need what he is doing. Not what I thought, but I need what he is is doing somebody shout it again it's okay to be wrong it's okay to be wrong it's okay to miss it it's okay to not get it right it's okay it's okay you will survive the other thing that i believe slowed them down was what they saw number one what they thought god was doing And they made up in their mind, that's what he was doing, but it wasn't what he said he was going to do. That made them slow. But what they saw slowed them down. First of all, watch this. They saw, Pastor Logan, they saw one of the most brutal deaths that you could ever see a leader or your revolutionist go through. This was horrific. This This was horrific to watch. Hallelujah. The pain, the suffering he went through, the agony, the death. But that's not the only thing they saw that made them slow of heart. I believe more than the death that they saw him die was the fact that it looked like he just gave up. Come on, walk with me a while. Hallelujah. It would have been one thing to see Jesus arrested, to see him die, but fighting while he did it. Are you hearing me? But it was another thing to see Jesus just willingly go to trial. Willingly let them arrest him. Willingly stand before Pilate with no defense. Willingly just keep his mouth shut. He was like a lamb. <clears throat> Led to the slaughter. Never once did he open his mouth. Told Peter, Peter, put away the sword. This is not how we're going to do things. 
Don't you know I could call 12 legions of angels to come and take me down off of that, but I'm not even going to call on them. Come on. It was one thing to see him die, but it was another thing to just see him woo, give up. Oh, but understand, <laughs> he didn't give up. He was laying down his life. Oh, I know it's not Easter, hallelujah, but, 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 but we're going to talk about it. Let me say that one more time. It, it looked like he was giving up when really he was laying down his. See, sometimes what we see happening doesn't always line up with what God is doing. Oh, I just said a thing there. Hallelujah. Let me say that one more time. Sometimes what we see happening doesn't always line up with what God is doing. Because it looks like defeat, but in actuality, victory is being won. It Oh God. It looks like failure, but in reality, it's the greatest success story of all time. Watch me, please. The thing about the death of Jesus was that in the midst of what they were seeing, Satan's kingdom was actually being taken down. I, I don't know if I can get any help today. Hallelujah. Because when they were wounding him, Logan, uh, my transgressions were being paid for. When they were bruising him, my iniquities were being taken away. When they were chastising him, my peace was being won. And when they were whipping him, uh, every one of my diseases uh, were being healed. You may see one thing, uh, but that doesn't mean God ain't doing another. Come on, somebody better praise God uh, that it, what you see ain't always what God's doing. I feel the Holy Ghost. Does anybody besides me feel the Holy Ghost? That's what he's saying, Pastor. I'm saying don't be slow of heart. Slow to see what God has said. Slow to see what God has doing because you can't get past what you're seeing. Yeah. This is why we walk by faith. Uh, you Bible scholars, hallelujah. This is why we walk by faith and not by our carnal senses. When you walk by sight, you get slow. Are you hearing me? When you walk by sight, you get slow to see what God's trying to do. And then when you get slow to see what God is doing, you give up before he can manifest the miracle. Are you hearing me? Some of you today are giving up not because God's failed or not because God's not coming through. Some of you have given up because you are allowing what you're seeing to slow you down from being able to see the miracle that God is about to release. But you need to declare to the devil this afternoon, I'm not going to miss it because I'm slow. Do I got anybody in here that would let the enemy know today, I refuse to miss my miracle. I refuse to miss my breakthrough. I refuse to miss God moving in my life because I'm too slow to see it. I, God Almighty, I, I refuse to get caught up on what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. Because I, I refuse, I refuse for my miracle to be next to me and I not even know it's there. Am I talking to anybody? I said, I refuse for my manifested victory to be walking down the road with me and me not even know he's there because I can't get past what I saw. Is anybody with me in this place? God said, you need to get delivered from your eyes. Come on, I need some help in there. You need to get delivered from your eyes. I know you saw destruction. I know you saw pain. But in the midst of the pain, God's working so He's working some stuff out. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be slow. Don't be too slow to get it. Don't be too slow to get it. Hallelujah. 
Don't be too slow to get it. Watch this, please. The enemy attacks the slow ones. Hear me. The enemy attacks the slow ones. Y'all better not sit on me this afternoon. Hallelujah. You better help me. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When a pack of wolves are hunting prey, and they're hunting it in a herd or a flock of animals, sheep or whatever they're hunting, they will many times follow a herd or a flock of animals many days waiting to strike. And often what they're waiting on is the slow ones that can't keep up. The slow ones that can't keep up with the rest of the herd. Hallelujah. And they fall back and they're isolated and they're behind everybody and they're by themselves. Sometimes it's the sick one. Sometimes it's the older one. Sometimes it's the young one. But whatever it is or whoever it is, they get slow. They get isolated from the rest of the pack. Hallelujah. The herd. And they're exposed and they're less protected. The enemy this afternoon is out. After the slow ones. Come on, I'm trying to help somebody. He's after the slow ones. He's after those that are slow to get revelation from God about their situations, about the direction of their life, or about what they're going through. And he likes to get the slow ones because he likes to strike you before you can get anything to stand on. God Almighty. Can I say that again? The enemy likes the slow ones because he likes to get the ones that ain't got a revelation to stand on. They're confused. They're disheartened. They're troubled. They don't know if they're mad at God. They don't know if God's left them. They don't know if God's forsaken them. And so he attacks you when you're behind because you don't have nothing yet that you can stand on and that you can throw back at him. Is anybody with me? I'm about to say something. You can often tell the slow ones in church. You can often tell the slow ones in church because they've been there as long as everybody else, but they don't praise like everybody. Oh, I'm talking today. I didn't come to make friends this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. You can tell the slow ones in the church because they're not praising like everybody else. They don't come as much as everybody else. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They don't got joy like everybody else. Everybody else has got faith. Everybody else has got victory. But they're sitting there with their lip all drawn out, their head hung over, and their shoulders slumped because God Almighty. Not because somebody else has a better situation than them, but it's because they're not too slow to understand that God is moving in their life and that God has promised some things that he will not back up on him. So the reason you can come in a Holy Ghost filled church service and everybody else around you can fall out but you stand there like a knot on the log is because you're slow. You're just slow. Well, the preacher, no, you're slow. Well, the music's too loud. No, you're slow. Well, I don't like the way he yells when he gets up there. No, you're slow. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It ain't got nothing to do with the music. You're just too slow. You won't let go of your eyesight. You won't let go of what you've heard and get on with it. God's got something for you. He's ready to break you through. God. He's ready to deliver you. You're too slow. Come to me with all that. Hallelujah. No. 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 No, don't come to me with all that. You're too slow. Because see, the slow ones in church feel isolated. And the devil tells him, you don't fit in. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. He says, you, you don't need to go to that church anymore. He, yeah, he, he downplays the singing, makes you hate the preaching, makes you hate the order of service, makes you hate how things are ran. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, are you hearing me? And all of it is, all of it is, is to try to get you out of the place where you can be protected and succeed. 
but this morning or this afternoon, it's not that you don't fit in. It's not that you don't like the church and the way things are. It's that you're slow. You're too slow to see what God is doing in your life. Everybody else around you is seeing it, but you don't want to see it. Now, I believe that we need to look back and check on the slow ones. I believe we need to pray for them. I believe we need to reach out to them. But I also believe you need to catch up. Oh, hallelujah. I said you need to catch up. Here's your word for today. Catch up. Look at that person next to you and say you might need to catch up. Catch up. Not Heinz catch up. No. Catch up. Catch up with the rest of us. I don't know about anybody else in this house, but I'm headed for revival. I'm headed for a move of God. I'm ready to see miracles, signs, and wonders. You can stay back there and be mad if you want to, but you might need to catch on up. You might need to get up here where the glory's at. You might need to get up here where God's moving you. Shout it, catch up. I'm going to tell you like I tell Amber when I'm trying to leave to get to church on Sunday morning. I look at Amber. She ain't in here, right? I look at Amber and I say, Amber, come on, girl, let's go. Come on, girl, let's go. And she says, well, I got to do this. I say, no, you ain't got time for that. We got to go. Well, I need to put that. No, you ain't got to grab it and let's go. You can put it on in the car. You can do your hair in the car. You can fix your hair later. We got to go. I'm here to tell somebody in this house, come on, girl, let's go. I'm here to tell somebody in this house, come on, boy, let's go. No, you ain't got time to be sad. You ain't got time to be mad. You ain't got time to be heartbroken. Let's go. God's got a word for you. Let's go. Somebody shout, let's go. We got to get in the presence of the Lord. We got to get into the word of God. We got to hear what God has to say about this season. You're going to have to forgive somebody. You're going to have to let go of the past. You're going to have to do something, but you're going to have to come on. You're going to quit being mad because somebody next to you is getting blessed and you're not. You're slow. Catch up. Somebody shout and catch up. Catch up. I refuse to believe what I'm seeing about this season. I'm catching up. I refuse to be slow to what God is doing. I'm going to catch up. Yeah. So watch this. After Jesus tells them that they're slow of heart, y'all all all right? All right, hallelujah. I keep going in. After Jesus tells them that they're slow of heart, he still never, Logan, reveals himself. But look at what he says after he tells them they're slow of heart. Verse 26. He says, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So he's speaking about himself in the third person as if he's not Jesus. (laughs) <laughs> but knows him, you know. Well, look at verse 27. What it says, he still doesn't reveal himself to them. He says, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So he doesn't tell them that he's Jesus. He doesn't tell them he's the Christ, that he's risen. Instead, even when, watch this please. Even when he had physical proof that he was who he was, he decides to give them, instead of physical proof, he decides to give them every word of God that proved he was the Christ. And that he had risen. Instead of giving them physical proof, He preached the word to them. I feel the Holy Ghost saying something in this house. I could manifest some stuff that would blow your mind. 
but God says I'm not going to do it instead I'm going to give you a word I'm getting ahead of myself and before I do anything in the physical God says I want to make sure you believe it because I said it see the generation of vipers that pharisaic generation they ask for a sign <laughs> but there'll be no sign given God says I'm not giving you a sign you Pharisee I'm giving you a word God saying I need somebody to shout because you got a word I need somebody to praise me because you got a word I need somebody to put a smile on their face not because everything's working out but because you got a word hallelujah is there anybody that knows how to praise him on a word God See, the reason he didn't show them the scars and he preached the word is because he didn't want their faith to stand in physical evidence. He wanted their faith to stand in the word. Why? Because the physical evidence wasn't going to be there much longer. He was going to ascend and they sung about it before I got up to preach and he was going to sit down on the right hand of the father. Is anybody with me? And the physical evidence wasn't going to be walking around anymore. He was going to be gone. But the word can I preach it like I feel it? Oh God. The word was going to remain. I want to tell somebody in this house the reason you're slow is because you're looking for physical evidence when really you need to stand on the word of God. Because the physical evidence won't always be there, but the word will. I said the word will. I said the word will. It ain't went nowhere since the beginning. And it ain't going nowhere. Is anybody with me in this house? The word will stand when the world's on fire. You see, my body won't always feel healed, but the word will always say, by his stripes I'm okay yeah I won't always feel victory but every time I look in the word it'll always say I'm more than a conqueror in all of these things does anybody hear me God Almighty hallelujah I won't always feel joy and feel peace but the word will always say his joy is in me so that my joy might remain full I, I need somebody to stand on the word I... so, so I'm here today because of the word I'm preaching to you on whatever day of the month this is April whatever Hallelujah. What is the day? 16th. I'm preaching today on April 16th because of the word. I'm still married because of the word. My kids are full with the Holy Ghost and working for the kingdom of God because of the word. Hallelujah. I got food in my cabinet. I got food in my refrigerator. I got a little bit of money in the bank. I got some gas in my tank because of the word. I'm not here because of man. I'm not here because somebody did something for me. I'm here because of the word. Anybody still standing because of the word? I feel the power of God in here. Oh, I'm about to run God oh my I said I'm about to run I feel it in this house the devil wasn't able to take me out and it wasn't because I was smart enough it was because of the word when I didn't got when I didn't have anything else I stood on the word I gotta move on, I gotta move on, I gotta move on, I gotta move on. God doesn't want you having faith based on physical evidence. 
He wants you to have faith based on his physical evidence. Physical evidence won't last, but the word will. So he tells them, are y'all still with me? Can I have a few more minutes of your attention? So he tells them, you're slow of heart, right? You're slow of heart. And he doesn't reveal himself. He begins to preach the word to him. He begins to tell him who he is from the word. So what's he doing? He's catching them up through the word of God. He's catching them up with where God is at. See, Logan, they're, they're, they're slow of heart concerning the word. So they're back here talking about the death and the empty tomb. Oh, I'm about to help somebody. And God has already defeated the devil. He's already took the keys from death, hell, and the grave. He's already got the Savior up. He's already walking around. And God's ready to move on. They're back here wondering where Jesus is. And God's saying, I'm ready to start my church. Come on, somebody. Catch up. Sometimes you can go through so much hell that it puts you behind and it makes you slow to believe. And you're stuck back here in the loss. You're stuck back here in the failure. You're stuck back there in the divorce. You're stuck back there in bankruptcy. You're stuck back there in when whoever left you and walked out on you. You're, you're stuck back in all of that. But God's already worked some stuff out for you. And he's ready to do something new. And you're stuck back here. And he's saying, I need you to catch up. I need you to catch up. You're stuck back in night. Oh, my God, I'm out of here. You're stuck back in 2000. You're stuck back in 2010. You're stuck back in 1995 and God says in 2023 I'm ready to move a mountain I'm I'm ready to do miracles you need to catch it you need to catch up how do I catch up I begin to see through the word what God is doing right not what I thought he would do not what it looks like he's doing, but what the word says he. Yeah. Shout it again. Catch up. Hallelujah. Look at that person next to you. Say, come on. 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 Can I give you a word? Can I give some of you slow ones a word? Um, are you ready? I don't know. I might have been up here too long. I need to pray. Lord, thank you for this service, God. Watch us as we go our separate ways, Lord. Bring us back again tonight. Okay, that's, that's for those that don't want to hear no more. You're dismissed. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Here's a word for you. Isaiah 43 and 18. Remember ye not the former things. Don't consider the things of old. Behold, I'll do a new thing. 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 I, no, I don't think you got it. You need to catch up. God's doing something new. God's doing something new. I said God's doing something new. No, the no more defeat. God's doing something new. No more sickness. God's doing something. No more loss. God's doing something new. Behold, I do a new thing. Oh, what? Well, Twenty years from now. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm doing a new thing. Uh, 30 years from now. I'm doing a new thing. Now. Somebody shout now. Right now. Let go of yesterday. God's doing a new thing. Right now. Logan, church go boom. Right now. Right now. Come on, home church. Right now. Right now. Now it shall spring forth. Now it shall manifest. Shout it one more time. Catch up. Catch up. 
How do I catch up? Forget about the past. Let go of the former things. God says, I'm doing something right now. And then he says, he says, shall you not know it? He's saying to Israel here, I'm going to do something new right now. And are you going to even know that I'm doing it? I'm going to do something new, but are you going to miss it? Why would they miss it? Because they're stuck focusing on the past. They're slow to see God's moving in the present. Shout it with me. Let go of the past. Catch up. And don't miss what God's doing right now. Stand up real quick. Just stand up. You can sit down here in a minute. Take one foot, lift it up, and put it down. What did you just do? You stepped into your now. Oh, I need somebody that really stepped in. I need somebody. Do I got three people that really stepped in? Do I got three people that's letting go of yesterday? That's letting go of their failures? That's letting go of what you thought God was doing? And you're stepping into your... Right now! Somebody shout, I'm not going to miss it. You can sit down. You can sit down. Shout it again. Catch up. Oh, God, I got to bring this thing down. I got to bring this thing down. Uh, just real quick, let me throw this in here for somebody. Uh, I, 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 I'm doing a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. I don't have time, but I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I don't know who needs that. I'm on the, I know I just handed you about 15 pieces of bacon, but I was like, wait a minute, and I just gave you two more pieces. Hallelujah. God's going to make a way in your wilderness and rivers in your desert. Don't get caught. I can't preach this. Shut up, Sean. Shut up, Sean. Move on. But I need to tell somebody, don't focus on your wilderness. If you do, you'll miss the way. Don't focus on your desert. If you do, you'll miss the river. But God says right now, Give me one person that believes it. Shout it right now. What's good? He's not. He's not. He 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 Because he'd be leaving soon, and he needed him, needed him to stand on the word. <sighs> because if he showed them the physical evidence and then left, they would just fall back and slow back down. God wants to catch you up, not with miracles. Not with physical manifestations. Are you hearing me? Because he knows once those things wear off. Once you're not in church on Sunday morning laying in the floor speaking in tongues with the glory cloud over top of you and you're at home with your lost spouse, you're at work with those people that are full of devils and you don't feel that glory. God says, I still want you to be able to stand. I, I still want you to be able to praise me. So I'm going to catch you up with the word. So you don't slow back down. Jesus, oh God, Jesus said to Thomas, and I'm almost through. Jesus said to Thomas, who refused to believe that Jesus was alive unless he put his hands in his nail prints and touched his scars. Thomas, who wanted physical evidence. He says to Thomas, Thomas, he showed up to Thomas. He showed him the scars. But he said, Thomas, I got to hush. I got to hush. You've, you've seen and believed, but blessed. Oh, God. Hallelujah. But blessed are those who believe and have not 
seen. So the blessing doesn't come to the believer. Come on, come on. Oh, I'm on. I'm on. Let me amen my amen. Let me say that one more time. The blessing doesn't come to the believer. No, it comes to the believer who's not believed because they've seen, but because they've heard. Do I got any believers that are believing because of the word? You're blessed this morning if you're believing because of the word. You're blessed this morning. That means you're about to prosper. That means you're about to come up. That means you're about to come out. How, how do you believe without seeing the word? Blessed are those that don't need physical evidence. Blessed are those who are not slow of heart. Why? Because the Lord answered me this. Why are you blessed if you can believe on the word alone? Because you will last till the blessing comes. I don't know who I'm talking to in this place. In other words, when you have your faith put in the word, it won't matter what you see. You'll be standing when God's moving. Some of you are too slow to get it. And God's ready to move, but you're still stuck trying to figure out what happened a year ago. Let me tell you your answer to what happened a year ago. It's right here in the word of God. Quit crying about it. Find the answer and move on. Why did he leave me? It's in the Bible. Why did I have to go through that? It's in the Bible. Find your answer and move on. Hold on, hold on. Can I just, hold on a uh, look at somebody and they say, find it and move on. Uh, okay, are you ready? Okay, I'm going to bring this thing down. You ready? Are you ready? All right, here we go. Are you ready? Okay. I don't know. I say this before. I always look like a crackhead up here. Hallelujah. I'm on that Jesus crack. Hallelujah. I got the twitch because I'm on the Holy Ghost crack. I say, why does he yell and why does he jerk and why does he, have you ever touched fire? What do you do when you touch fire? You yell, you jump. I'm on fire! Is there anybody on fire? If you're on fire, you ought to move. If you're on fire, you ought to jump. Come on, catch up, you slow ones. Catch up. We're on fire. Look at that person next to you and say, catch up. We're on fire. Mm. I'd rather you be hot. No, no, sorry. I'm not going to go there. Hallelujah. Jesus, watch this, please. Watch this. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm trying to hug. Jesus had to catch them up. Watch this, please. And this is a word for somebody. Are you ready? Jesus had to catch them up, Logan, because he didn't want them to miss the outpouring that was coming. <laughs> On the Feast of Pentecost. Let me say that again. On the feast, on the Jewish feast of Pentecost, the feast honoring the harvest and the latter rain, when all the Jews would be gathered in Jerusalem 
honoring that feast at the temple, there was a promise a coming. <laughs> Oh, I ain't got no Pentecostal folk in here tonight do, or this afternoon. Do I got any Pentecostal? I thought I was in the right church. There was a promise coming. But the only way for this promise to come is Jesus had to leave. Uh, he said in John 16, 7, he said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient. It's needful for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter, the Holy Ghost, not the third cousin of Jesus, not the stepbrother of Jesus, but the third person in the Godhead that embodied all of who God is in spirit form the comforter the Holy Ghost your defense attorney your miracle working power your revelation your teacher your paraclete one who summoned to your aid yeah, the Holy Ghost he said he'll not come to you but if I depart I'll send him up to you so Jesus is saying this promise can't come unless I leave watch me he had to leave because he had to go put the blood on the mercy seat in the temple and cleanse man so that we could be pure enough for the Holy Ghost to come and dwell within us so watch me please if Jesus would have just caught them up through physical evidence, then when he left, they may have left too. And guess what? Some did. There were about 500 there that were told to go to Jerusalem before Jesus ascended until they be endued with power from on high. But only 120 were in the upper room. The rest were too slow. I'm saying to you, oh God, and I'm almost through. <laughs> I'm saying to you that there's about to be an outpouring of his spirit. Yeah. I'm going to say it one more time. There's about to be an outpouring of his spirit. And some are going to miss it because they're too slow. Some are going to miss it because they're stuck in what happened 20 years ago. Some are going to miss it because somebody took their seat at church. Some are going to miss it because who left them and who hurt them is still on their mind and weighing heavy on their heart. Some are going to miss it because they don't know why God did it this way instead of that way. Some are going to miss it because they're wondering where is God and why hasn't he moved yet. But for those of you that are standing on his word, I want to tell you, get ready. Oh, I ain't got no more help to do a hallelujah. I said for those of you that are standing on his word, get ready. The rain is coming. The rain is coming. There's an outpouring coming. I said there's an outpouring coming. I said there's an outpouring coming. And those of you that's been standing on the word, you ain't going to miss it. I said you ain't going to miss it. You're going to be there when the children are getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. When the blinded eyes are open. When the visions are coming. Somebody shout, I'm standing on the word. I can't catch you up through physical evidence because I got to go. And I, when I go, there's an outpouring coming. And if I go and you're standing on physical evidence and I'm not there, you won't be there. So I'm going to catch you up with the word. 
Because if you're standing on a word, when everybody else has walked out, when everybody else has left, you're going to be there when the Holy Ghost starts pouring out, when the prophecy of Joel continues to be fulfilled. I know it was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2, but Logan is still being fulfilled in 2023. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Just remains standing. Yeah. All right. Here's what the Lord showed me. Are you ready? Here's what the Lord showed me. Uh, I'm going to give you one more scripture. You ready? Hebrews 1 3. Hebrews 1 3. Watch with me. Who, being the brightness of his glory, talking about Jesus, the first image of his person, this is my last scripture, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Okay. Yeah, this is it. Um, that's all I need out of that. Uh, everything is being upheld by the power of God's word. Matter of fact, you may be seated just for this. I'm done, I promise, I promise. I know you feel like you're in a Catholic church. Hallelujah. This is a Holy Ghost Catholic church. Hallelujah. In the Catholic Church, they got to tell you to stand, hallelujah, but the Holy Ghost gets you up. Like when Mary walked into Elizabeth's house and Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist and she was pregnant with the Word of God. When the woman that was pregnant with the Word of God walked in, what was in, what was in Elizabeth's bed just began to leap. That's why you get up when you hear the word, you jump. Because what's I'm, what I'm pregnant with is, is causing what you're pregnant with to kick. I'm pregnant with a word, hallelujah. And when I release that word and I bring that word into your presence, it causes what's in you to begin to. So watch this. this. All things are upheld by the power of his. Here's what the Lord showed me. Here's what the Lord showed me. Come here, Logan. Come here, Logan. Stand right here. Hallelujah. Logan represents the word. Uh, Taj, stand at the end of that aisle right there. Please, hallelujah. Stand at the end of that aisle right there. When I tell you to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you to come on, and, but I want you to, when I tell you to come walk to me, I want you to walk to me just kind of slow. Just, just kind of slow. Hallelujah. But watch this. This is what the Lord showed me. Logan's the word. Taj is the blessing. I need a devil. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Come here, devil. Stay right there. Stay right there. Come here. Let's come over here. Watch this, please. Watch this, please. Don't turn towards me. Hallelujah. You're the word. Hallelujah. Watch this. Come here. Come here. See, I'm waiting on my blessing. Just come slowly, real slowly. And it's coming. But the devil wants to attack me. Push me. Just push me. He wants to attack me before the blessing. Push me. But the word. My blessing's coming. And the enemy wants to get me out of the way. So I miss what's coming. And so he attacks me in my finances. Push me. But the word holds me up. I don't know who I'm talking to. My blessing's coming, but he doesn't want me here to get it. So he attacks my body. But the word holds me up. Come on, blessing. The devil keeps attacking. But the word holds me up. And because of the word, my blessing. Oh, I wish somebody would praise him. Let the devil know my blessings on the way. I said my blessings on the way. I ain't standing on physical evidence. I'm leaning on the word. Somebody shout catch up. Watch me, watch me. Again, come here, come here. It's right there. Now, I want you to walk slow. But this time, because this is the word the Lord gave me, and I'm hush, I'm done. When, when I say now, I want you to walk slow, but when I say now, 
I want you to run to me. Are you hearing me? Are you ready? Start walking slow. And the enemy's attacking. Come on, attack. But I'm standing on the word. The enemy's attacking. Come on. But I'm standing on the word. Come on. The enemy's attacking. I said, now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Here's what you saw. Here's what the Lord said. Here's what the Lord said. The Lord said, for those that are standing on the word, I'm about to accelerate the blessing. I know the devil's attacking her, but God said I'm about to accelerate. You better run, run for me. I see it coming. Watch the what? You might need. Scripture for that. I give you scripture for it. You ready? Okay. Ever since Moses, no, come on. Um, it was prophesied yeah. um, that the Son of God would come, and He'd be. Just remain there, stand there. Don't go nowhere. The Son of God would come, and He'd be manifested in the flesh. He'd show up, and we, and so we know it was prophesied for thousands of years, and we know, <clears throat> we know that under the empire of Rome, a little virgin girl was visited by an angel, and she got pregnant by the Holy Ghost, and gave birth to a son, right? Yeah, and the Bible says, the Bible says that the Word was manifested in the flesh. And the Bible says that we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of God. But can I tell you that 500 years before that in the empire of Babylon, there was three little Hebrew boys. You might know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But these Hebrew boys stood on the word of God and said, I will not bow. I will not bend. And the king said, okay, can I preach it like I feel it? We're going to throw you in the fire. And so they did. But then the king looked in the furnace and said, wait a minute. Did not throw three men in the fire. They said, yeah, king. Well, how come I see four? And the fourth man looks like the son. Oh, God's about to accelerate. I said, God's about, God's about to accelerate. God's about to, God's about to accelerate. God's about to accelerate. If you believe it, jump, spin, shout, do something. It's about to hurry up. be slow because the blessings about to accelerate I said I can't be slow because the blessings about to accelerate I'm saying to you that was wasn't supposed to make an appearance <laughs> come on I said what wasn't so most supposed to make an appearance until 500 years later showed up in a fire for he three Hebrew boys I'm saying to you get ready it may not have been supposed to come yet but because you stood it's on the way somebody shout it's on the way shout it again it's on the way oh I feel the glory this morning 
don't know when you're going to eat today, but who cares about the ham? I'm 